piece that we cut out and put a little bit more over here. So maybe that's what we'll do. That little piece is right here. Yeah, we can do that. I just believe in getting more surface coverage than needed to be. So this will work beautifully. So let's go and peel this off as well. So we have a lot more surface coverage. It's always a side you don't want to peel first. It does the opposite of what you want. <laughs> there we go. So where we cut off an inch, we can continue on here. That way it doesn't feel like it's missing out on things. Yep. I try to do good. It's about right. There we go. Now we have a little bit more coverage. Once it takes shape, we can peel this guy off. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Not bad putty, huh? <laughs> this is double stick tape, so let's go ahead and prepare. I think we did clean our surface with alcohol. So let me go and get back the light on. First of all, let me secure my chair here. It wants to stroll away anytime it wants. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's go ahead and get the light back on. There we go. Awesome. All right, nice and clean. And we are gonna tilt it back. And again, you wanna go all the way back as you can farthest. You can see here, not that clean as I like to be now that I see it with the thing. So let me go ahead and put this aside for a second. Let me get my towel again. This has a little bit of alcohol. Look at that. Again, I'm OCD when it comes to seeing things that just can't really accept that I could do better. I'll do it, especially with my vehicle, you know. Okay, what's this here? A labeling? It's weird. Probably Tesla's. Don't need it. Extra electrical tape from somewhere. Much better. Much, much better. Okay. Ooh. Uh oh. Don't want this, this, this guy to give me trouble, so be careful. Make sure you kind of swing him somewhere, hold him somewhere. Somewhere he's not going to create trouble. I'll just hold him. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try. We're gonna try to flip these guys here. These guys are trying to create trouble for me. There we go. Sort them later. Alright, so we wanna get to that clean area where we promise this guy he's gonna be. Don't wanna touch this piece of surface. There goes my chair again, I'm not surprised. It never wanted to stay with me anyway. <laughs> you gotta feel it like there's a groove, I think, where it can go in. I think this might be it. Nope, still coming loose.
All right, maybe I'll have to bring it up a little bit more. Okay, so pretty much bring it up a little bit more where you feel more of the surface sticking. That's probably where you really want to be at. Actually, you can still push it down. I think there's a Let me go ahead and get that guy in here. I think it's gonna stick. Maybe because it's colder. Yeah. I just don't feel confident this thing will stick well. Couldn't use some stronger one, huh? Maybe it's a good idea to use a I think Henshaw did give us some strong ones. They said 3M on there, so it has to be the quality of 3M. Okay. Let me just get a feel for this real quick. I just don't feel confident that thing is going to stay there. Yeah, I don't feel... I don't feel confident this thing is going to stick too well. So I might just use my own 3M. So we tried it. It's too... Yeah, it's not that sticky. I wish I didn't even put it on to be honest with you. But it's good that it's peeling off easily. Alright, let's just use some of the real stuff. <laughs> so these 3M doesn't do the trick. Uh, they're not going to stick for good. Alright, let's go back. And let's open that 3M. Like, I'm glad I brought it. Here we go. Yeah, these things, I learned my lessons. Uh, sometimes uh, these tapes did not work too well. You gotta get the, the red 3M. The cushion one. Uh, this is the strong heavy duty one right here. This one, this one doesn't play around. Scotch. I'm not sure, is Scotch made by 3M? Yeah, 3M. Scotch 3M, that's what I thought. Okay, so let's do this again. We'll use the real 3M strip. Back is killing me, bear with me. Okay, so again, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be turning this this way. So we're gonna apply the adhesive here. So we tried the other way, let's go and use the real Scotch 3M here. That's the best way to open it. That way I can actually use the case to put it back in if I need to. That'll work. Oh, it's just front and back side it. There we go. Yeah, this is heavy duty. Now I see it already. Okay. We're gonna go and line it up. This was like 10 bucks, by the way, nine something at Lowe's. Probably good strips should do it. Uh, actually, a little bit corner cut. work this one's too low so it's not gonna do anything for us I believe so it might uh, it might go forward a little bit but I think all the pressure is gonna be from there so we're good there save this you might want to put in this package right away if you're else these things attract dirt like our Tesla front bumper I attract insects so there we go all right so we got this now 
Give it a good pressure on all points. This should be a lot more stronger. I just didn't feel confident with the other one. Again, this is just taking your time and doing a really nice job. <laughs> if, you, if you know what you're doing, you can probably get this done a lot less. All right. Make sure it's all fiddled in there. Okay, here we go. There's no going back on this guy here. Extremely small. This is the brand here, by the way, if you want to see it. It says extremely strong mounting tape. It helps to have a, a heated surface, but since it's a little colder, we'll do what we can here. Should be fine. There we go. Got that. Like black on black matches. All right, so let's go and go back here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twirl this, hold in place so it's not scraping anything. You probably wanna do the same thing, kind of hold your hold your wires there. So let's go back up there, shall we? Oh, I hate getting up, <laughs> but we gotta get up. Get up, Michael. <clears throat> All right, so let's see if I can set this somewhere here. You guys can see I can use both hands to force it. There we go, wasn't that bad. Here we go. You can see here I'm holding it. Again, it's this way. Get the cables out of the way first. We're going to try to get out of the way also. So one hand's holding the cable out of the way. Anything else that could be in the way. Oh wow, this thing I can feel it already. It's like a suction cup. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm place it all the way where I want you guys to be able to follow me. So let me see if I can go lower there. Alright, give me one second. See that right there? I want it to go all the way where it like it hits a dead end. That way the double stick tape can just stabilize this position, not worry about holding it from incline position in case it needs to slide further down. It's already down as far as it can go. Okay, there we go. Oh. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, there's like little ribbons here. I don't think we could put on any, I don't think we could put on here because if we do that then the the tray might not sit properly that's a thing. Yeah, I spoke with Hanshaw since I couldn't figure out how to get this thing to stick and I don't think there is any possible way we cleaned it with alcohol <clears throat> either when but it's just not really sticking. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that first idea I thought of being having the holes here and we're going to actually put some tie straps on there. We could probably put it too to level out the level out to make sure it's stabilizing. All right, so let's do that. Let's go and get a couple of tie straps and let's feed them through here, shall we? So I just peeled it off. It just came off easily. So it doesn't really matter the quality of tape. It's not gonna stick that well for us anyway. So let's go and get our tie straps. And where these are the tie straps that came in. We'll use their tie straps. And we're gonna go ahead and Get this guy out here. <clears throat> Just a couple. All right. Here we go. Let's see if the distance between this and the thing should be fine. There's a cable already there, so that's what we're going to use to join them together. <clears throat> I think this will work. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tight squeeze.
So let me go ahead and put this down here. You guys can see me. Okay. You guys see that? I'm incognito in the dark here. Okay, so we're gonna feed it through here. In fact, these are so little. I think I'm gonna just upgrade my tie straps. <laughs> if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna try to do it a little bit better. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna just go and get some good tie straps on my own inventory. These look a little bit more thicker compared to these ones are great probably for wrapping a little bit smaller. So you can see here these are like almost floss thinness. Not floss, but you get me. So these will probably fit much, much better. So let's go and tie strap them on there. We can't do it one way, we'll do it another way. It's great about it. It actually has a thing where it doesn't. There we go. And what we do is I'm just going to wrap it up for now and then I'll continue. You'll see daylight again, uh, but to you guys, it'll be the same video. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Oh no. We always manage to latch something, huh? Let's put it somewhere where it's not going to cause us trouble, right? Let's just put it somewhere right there or something. All right. These tie straps here, they come around. We're just gonna tie it on there. Tie it onto that cable. Bit of a challenge to feed it in there. You guys probably can't see what I'm doing. Even I can't see what I'm doing. I can't got it. Then we'll just pull it through. Do one at a time. Or probably easier to do both at a time actually. As long as they don't crisscross. Wish I had a little bit more slack to work with. Let me see here. I get this one in here. Get my hand out of the way shortly. There we go, got one, and we get another one here. That's why I'm going to go ahead and pose this video for tomorrow, but you guys will see a daylight. Just don't want to rush any, any of this, so you guys can see a little bit better in the daylight. But let me just go and finalize this, show you where I'm at. This will prevent it from, I guess, bouncing or rattling in the, in the front. All right. You guys want to see that? There you go. Do them pull it. Much better than just tape. That's why I'm thinking tie straps are way better than electrical tape or. they don't stick non dirt area there we go. I want to move it a little bit sorry I wish you guys could see it where I'm at right now all right almost there This hand tie doesn't have to be like crazy tight. Just want to make sure it's not moving around. There we go. Motor shouldn't go anywhere. See what I did with the tie straps. I put it right. Right there on the cable. There's two of them so. Then we're gonna go and cut this tie straps to make it a little bit cleaner. There we go. Fish it out. Bring a cutter. Probably cut with a pair of scissors.
little harder with a pair of scissors. That's what we got these pliers for. Just got to take it down a little bit further before I can snap it. All right, come on. There we go. Get into the lock position. Cut it, you guys say. One, two, three. Take that guy out. Don't want any loose garbage. So the last one. Probably the most challenging one is just making this look nice and neat. All right. Okay, got it. Did the, did the other piece come out? I got one piece here. The other one's still somewhere in there. So, let me go ahead and grab it. I hate when it ricochets, you don't know where it's gone. There it is. Don't want to. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up for today. And you guys will see this video tomorrow. Okay, good morning. We're back. For those of you guys who want this kit, there will be a special promo code in the video link description below. We also listed installers available if you don't want to do what we're doing. So let me go and get this car open again. And I guess I have to close it one more time because we're not finished with the trunk yet. So let's do this. I put a little thing here to let people know this is my Tesla because the keys are all the same, right? You can't tell. So it comes with a, with a little protective coating. Uh, that's what I got with the console and everything. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens. Battery's charging too. So everything still opens. The shocks, unfortunately, it's not like the, the tough struts ones. I mean, the one that has like high compression struts. So it's, it's pretty much, well, it's actually a lot more resistance opening it. So we're going to continue where we off, left off yesterday. What I did yesterday was pretty much tie strap it. Um, see if I can show you the light a little bit. I'll use this light to see. There you go. See there? Just kind of tie strap it two there together. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to go ahead and route the wires. So this one's going to be routing a little bit more neater. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me see if I can place this here. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. Good, 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 good angle. Almost there. There we go. That way you guys can see everything underneath the carriage. Okay, so let's see if you guys can see where I'm kind of pulling this over. You can see it curves the first one, the first beam right here. It curving in. So we're going to go and route this. There's actually a horn here on some other models, but for some reason I don't have a horn here. And uh, normally they would mount it somewhere here, but it doesn't really stick either. Uh, we did put alcohol and everything. So he said it doesn't really matter if it doesn't stick. Just want to make sure it doesn't go crazy off places. So I'm thinking when I hit a bump, I hopefully it does make this click noise. If that's the case, I could put some adhesive here just to hold it down a little bit more. Oh. Fell down. Okay, let's see if I can get it better situated. There we go. Nice. All right, there you go. You guys can see everything here. Try not to cover my arms here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just route this wire. I guess you feel underneath. There's a couple of beams you can go through. And mainly the idea is just to wrap it and bring it around like this. So we can do that right now. Should go underneath or over this. Maybe best to go underneath it. Just in case we ever need to yank this to have more slack it's not in the cable way. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and unlatch this. 10 millimeter socket. There we go. Everything's 10 millimeters so far. I haven't ran into eight yet. And I think that's gonna be with the trunk. But the trunk should also need a little uh, star torque for the trunk, uh, T45 they call it. I thought this was gonna have another star torque here as well, but I guess not. Uh, I guess we don't have to remove the the hood latch, the front hood latch, so that's what needs probably T45. Okay. So there we go. That one's moved. My hand's free, I could be a little bit more speedier. 
All right, let's go ahead and bring this guy here. And there's a little hook this goes into it. I think I see the hook there. You guys don't, you guys see it too? A little bit right there, that's the hook right there. So you wanna poke this guy here. Get a close up right there. See this right here? You wanna poke this little guy here directly into there. Get a zoom in that one. And it just goes right into that little, sort of a backward latch hook sort of. You gotta get in. You might have to move a little bit of rubber. You know what? Let me go and get something better. Here, use this natural light, right? Yeah, my back was kind of killing me yesterday, so I had to stop for a little bit. But other than that, I'm back. I think it's like that. I think it's right there, right? For some reason. I think you have to really go in here first and then go in there first. Sort of like a zigzag. Lucky these things are, what do you call them? Hmm. There's no other way other than that to latch. I don't think it's this way. Let's see if it actually turns this way. Maybe go in like this first. Oh, you have to probably give it a little. So, so this is right here. Let me bring you guys closer in. See that right there? See how it's straight, vertical, the slot. And let's see if this thing goes stay. This guy here. Let me get a second here. I can't hunch over too long. My back just feels like it's giving in. <laughs> Alright, here we go. We got sit in here. Okay, so if you see here, see how it's straight line? If you look at this hook here, it's not a straight line. It, it's gonna go ahead and come back to horizontal. You see that? Like a long horizontal. So what you do is you gotta face it vertical, just like that hole slot. So you poke it in like this, and then you can curve it around, which makes sense. That's the only way it'll fit in first. And then you can just bring it way back there. It does feel a little tension in the spring area here. And don't worry, we'll sort this back to the, the down force. Second, let's go and get this bolt in. You'll see all the struggles here. All right, just kind of tighten it as I can by hand and then we'll get ready to tighten it some more. We might not tighten it all the way fully yet because we might have to adjust maybe these two, but hopefully we can just adjust this right here, this tension here. And that's what probably what's gonna help us. So, there we go. Today's November 25th. I think we might gonna have a Black Friday special for these kit, especially with the trunk. It's gonna be the version three modification, which allows the manipulation of the screen to blink <coughs> when you have it open. That way you'll be able to trigger something where you can still push the open button and have it closed. So it's gonna be pretty neat. That's the version three from Hanshaw. I keep on saying Hanshaw, it might be Hanshaw. H-A-N-S-S-H-O-W. Uh, so it could be Hanshaw. <clears throat> but um, I just say Hanshaw. You can just believe my accent then. All right, here we go. So this here again, you don't really have to do anything slice this in. These things are so flexible that you can pretty much tap it in there. <clears throat> and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go neatly, pretty much lay it on here. And we're gonna use a small tie strap that came with it. So we're gonna tie it neatly. So it'll look really, really nice. Oh, but first of all, let's go and get these little trickets also. The rest of this one. This one we need to move out. We're gonna put his own springs. So let me go and get the springs from that one. You guys, hopefully still stay focused on that area. There we go. We're gonna have to go get that spring. 
let me go ahead and clear out the camera. It might be a little bit moist from the cold. Let me see if I can get resolution back. Nice. There we go. Let me go get the spring. Uh, we'll bring all the other wires and the kits with us. So we're just walking around this area, so. All right, so there we go. The spring's pretty much in this bag here with the speaker and everything and the power supply. So I think the hardest part is uh, pretty much adjusting this latch here and the rest is just tidying up the wires and putting things back. You can see it's just a little bit uh, time consuming as far as uh, pretty much routing and everything goes. But other than that, it should work. We're gonna go and get the little small tie strap. In fact, actually they did come with a big tie strap as well. You can see here, there's a couple of big tie straps here. Not that big, but big enough where you can join it and you can mount the motor there. So I guess regardless, they pretty much prepare you for everything. These adhesive would just be just as good. I didn't really have to use my other uh, extra adhesive because I guess it's just the surface itself on um, Tesla. So Hanshaw did a great job of preparing everything that you could have need. All you need to do is just bring your socket wrench and uh, <clears throat> maybe a little plier to help pull these things out. But other than that, everything is there for you. So let me go ahead and get ready to go and pull the spring out. We'll put our own spring. Okay, so I think we have to hook this one first as well. So let's find out first. So first of all, let's just pull this guy out. You want to pull it out pretty carefully. You don't want anything. Yeah. A little tension in there, but not much. So there it goes. That's the spring. Look at the difference. The one we're replacing. The ones on it. All right. Okay. First of all, I think these things are interlocked as well. Let's see how this one goes. Might need to pull a little bit, or maybe pull this guy here to this side here. Hopefully get it to hook somewhere. Not sure. Exactly, I think this might be, kind of get a feel. I think this is where they insert it in, so this is the hook area probably. So you probably want to hook it right here in this guy. So this guy will come down with, oh. Sorry, startled me. <laughs> if you push this, it will uh, retract. There we go. There it is, see? So that one goes there, this one pulls here, and then this guy right here hooks, and you bring him to this hook right here. So you can almost kind of mechanically, if you're inclined, you can see where things are made to be this way. There we go, how easy was that? So it's done. So it's just interlock mechanism here, which is very sturdy. So that was it. Uh, and then we're gonna tidy up the wires here from underneath. You guys can see me go underneath here and just start tidying it up. I'll pull out some of the small little guys here. So, uh, from this 3M packet here. Very nice. There we go. I'm just gonna put it in the ground floor here on my chair. That way I can just go as we go. Okay. So I guess maybe we don't even have to tie it down yet. You know why? Because I might even want one wires and pair it all up together and just do it all in one beam shot. So let's go to the next step. Next step is pretty much to route the other cable. Let's see if I can get this right here. We're gonna route this guy here, which is coming from the back end of the, the, the motor there. We're gonna pretty much route him underneath. Now be careful, one thing is though, there is a hole that you can go straight in like this but you don't want to take that hole because that's actually where your pull rod is gonna actually screw into. And if you do that, it won't, the thread will be pretty much wedged by this guy here and it won't actually allow you to tow your car if you ever need it. They call it a tow hook. So that's why you don't go straight through it because there's a little thread here, which I'll show you how to remove it first of all. Hopefully we get some more light in here. So here we go. <clears throat> you look at this like a clock position. So this is being 12, this is being six. You wanna push the number one indicator right here put some pressure in here you can use your thumb make sure you don't have nails i have ppf i'm not too worried about there you go see it pops out and that's it really and then you just pull from the number seven and when you do put it back in you reverse it you pretty much you can see here it has a little male here where it's going to go back in the same way and you can see there's little notches for these things right here to go in these certain notches so you can't just fit them randomly and turn it so you make sure you go back to number one 
and then push on number seven to flatten it in. So let's go ahead and bring that out. They did a really good job in the PPF. You can see how clean this is. Here, let me get you a look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Very nice. Yep, it's just got PPF, what, less than three days ago? This front bumper. Uh, pretty much completed on a Friday. Took it in on a Monday. Very nice. Uh, this is like some of the. Uh, there should be another cable here, too. There it is. It's kind of hidden, like way on there. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be hidden that way or it's going to block something. So let's go and pull it all out. Because the reason why is we want to feed that line all the way underneath this guy here. So, I mean, underneath further. So let's go and pull that second one in. Oh, here. All right, let's see. There we go. This should have been out, actually, for whatever reason. It didn't stay together. There it goes. That's right there, right there. Careful. Don't want to scratch your bumper, so don't fiddle around this too much. We just want to make the room available so we can feed our other line in. So let's go ahead and tilt these to the side, shall we? Or we can. All right, so there we go. It's open now, ready for us. And we're going to go ahead and get started on routing the other guy underneath. So let's see here. I can't even see where it's at. I'm not seeing the hole yet or the light coming through. But I know it's somewhere underneath here. I think I see a little bit. It might be underneath there. God, I wish I could even see where it, where it could possibly be. It's just really, really. Let me see if I can shine a light. I can shine a light through. You guys can see it with me. Uh, where's the hole? I'm supposed to have it in. Let me go and install that headlight again. This is optional. Once you see where I find it at, you can find it yourself. But I'm just going to go ahead and put the light on my headlight here. I took the batteries out. For some reason, devices, you don't use them. I was afraid that it's going to go ahead and just kill the battery so I don't leave it on if I don't use it that frequently. I normally don't use this headlight that frequently. There we go. I'm going to try to shine the light through here. I see the light. You guys can see it too, sort of in the shadow. Still not finding it yet. See there? There is a light in a tunnel. Oh, so somewhere right there. Somewhere really, really on the side. Like right there, see that? That's the light right there shining through. So what we need to do is get it over there. Our cable wires anyway. Let me go ahead and do that. You guys see it? Take out the light with the light. So somewhere in this beam right here on the right hand beam. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Give a little bit more light for you to work with. I just Kind of where the headlights okay so here it goes the second guy and if he's supposed to be somewhere here we should be able to fish him out i'll put my finger in there that way i can grab it if he falls anywhere near me i don't want to go through this hole here there you, go. you have to almost go underneath so put your finger underneath because there's some styrofoam there that you you have to get away from and i'm almost there I'm feeling him. Actually, I got him. Uh, there we go. Sort of like fishing him out. You can come on and see on this side here. You can see how much my fingers are wedged underneath. He's actually underneath. So I got him. Well, I got one of them anyway. I think it's enough here to bring him out. You can see there? He's just like right there hanging. You can see that here. I see him. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't lose him. There you go. Just trying to hook them. I should have put maybe my my smaller finger. I have fat fingers. It's not helping me with this job. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let me get another finger in there that might be. There you go. Look at that teamwork. But yeah. Yeah, so you'll get him. It's just he's like, again, you don't want to go directly through here because that's where your toe hook is going to be. You see there's threads there. 
and you put it through there good luck unscrewing this guy here I'll show you what you mean Tesla comes with their the tow hook which is underneath all this guy here again I have a standard range plus right there see that guy right there he screws in there in fact here I never did this before I never had to use a tow for my car so we'll find out so this is how a tow hook would work you would pretty much see that right there the tow truck uh, if they're Tesla authorized tow truck they would know exactly what to do and then you would spin it see how it has a thread so you would put the thread right through there right through there see that see that thread and that's why you don't want to put your your emergency pull latch this is pretty much that's all it's for is just emergency there you go you can you got to do it slowly until you feel that it's going in the thread I think it's still righty tidy I believe it might be lefty loosey since I never did this before I read the manual but all I know is for a tow hook this thing is pretty solid it kind of inclines a little bit down that's weird oh yeah it's almost like it's not perfectly like vertical to the to the thing but no it's not screwing in let's see if I can figure it out oh man Lefty Lucy, maybe? Anyway, that's for a separate project there. Uh, let me see. I hate when I can't do something I'm showing it on camera. So I'll go out of my way and try to make it happen. Pull this down so I can sit on it without dirtying my jean, my docker shorts. All right. Let's see if I can use both hands. I gotta be careful because I don't want to mock my PPF. Okay. Here we go again. Okay, I'm using one arm to support it, which you guys can't see from this angle, so here we go. I'm gonna use one arm to support, and I can see a little bit more better here. So I guess who's doing this a lot, they probably know. You'll think it figure it go in the latch first. I think it's just like thread right off the tip, so it makes it a little bit harder. I hear it, but I'm not seeing it. Not sure. Oh, check it out. It's a left thread. It seems like it's digging in with the left. That's interesting. Look at that. See the thread? It's like lefty is tightening it, so righty tighty not be the thing. Wow. So I guess we learned something. It's counterclockwise to actually drive it in. It's reverse thread, you call it. Look at that. Now I could just go ahead and, you know. Don't have to worry about gas electric. <laughs> I was gonna say gas. Now I can just pull my own car. <laughs> oh yeah, it's definitely there. Amazing. It just helps support it. That's all. So, see so the reason why you don't want to pull this cable through that thread line is it's already tough enough. We're just trying to get this thread in there, let alone try it for it to grind on your uh, thing here. So you want to pull the whole thing out, including this um, it's a uh, shield. So let's make sure we do that. Let me go and reverse this back. Now uh, we did it. Good to learn about your cars when you do your own installation or you can watch others do it too uh by the way if you ever need help installation there's going to be uh you know me and um larry lee so far in the description uh there's more cities available i can cover pretty much from fresno all the way to stockton uh, there might be a service fee for me to travel unfortunately uh even though uh, you know electric is gas but it's just a time commute um i might even hit up larry just to go over the new setup uh for the the trunk the version 3 modification uh, you can definitely modify it I think the the next setup come will probably come already pre wired it that way but for now I think for us be careful this is horrible as far as stripping your paint or anything like that there we go I want to get the nice soft insulator out of there again lucky I have PPS so these light scratches ain't gonna really do anything which I didn't touch thank goodness okay so you want to just pull it out enough for yourself in fact if this was already hidden we can probably put it back to being hidden. I think all of them we're gonna have to probably put it back. So, what you wanna do is, um, I'm not sure if this was actually even connected at this point. Oh, this is very small adhesive. This thing was always coming off already. Yeah, this adhesive is not that strong. There we go, I just gave it a little bit more force. 
just to make sure we don't lose it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and duct tape this together. I believe you just duct tape this one together for some reason. You wanna duct tape it like right there or so, and then you can flex this back in and so forth. The reason why is you want the pressure to be held here while you're pulling this guy here. Again, it won't actually release um, unless you know you have electricity to the, to the unit, the motor. So no one can just come in here and just pull your lever and open your frunk. So that's not gonna happen. You have to have access to the car first. So again, this is held by some some one little adhesive here. I thought it was like kind of like more securely mounted. But you can see here, that's all it is. It's kind of almost gapping. So it's not very strong. I think I did have made it strong now. And it's held by a, a tie strap. <laughs> so it's not like, <laughs> it's not made for a hook. So I guess if this breaks off, it's better than breaking the whole thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and duct tape this real quick here. And maybe we'll even tie strap it too. So you guys are still following me. All right. This is why my installation video takes too long. I, I go sidetrack and talk about everything under the sun. Okay, so again, I use Scotch 33 Plus. These are good. Um, I just like 3M brand Scotch anyway. It's better to use the real deal because you can use the cheap stuff sometimes. They start getting sticky on you and they don't really do the, the purpose of the job is to make sure it tapes the two adhesive together. I mean the two, uh, I can't spin this in an angle so I'm going to do my best here just kind of sort of flex it a little bit. I'm careful not to rub on anything other than the inside. Oh, look at that. It came off already entirely. So, anyway, it didn't really stick that well. We could put some of our own, but I'm glad it's off. I can actually do this a little bit more cleaner. I think these are the only two you have to wire together, so that's why I'm doing it this way. You want to give it a good pull and tug. Um, and then we're going to start wrapping this guy here as well. it doesn't go anywhere back and forth and if you really want to get a little bit more you can put like a little tie strap as well I'm not sure why we need to do it this way yet but if I know the logic of it I'll let you guys know in the next video or so forth oh, there you go nice and clean I just like to do a really clean job I just don't feel confident in the tie strap one alone so let's go ahead and uh, use some of this uh, extras little small things here and just put one tie strap and we'll get this guy back on the, the plates shortly so there we go let's see if we can mount it somewhere where we feel confident it's, you remember there's like a little beam of gap right there uh, if you can remember the cable line so I'm gonna try to go through it with this guy here help flatten the brakes as well so he doesn't get yanked forward he doesn't get yanked backwards supposedly all right, so this one's gonna require a little bit of um, pooling, so we're gonna need our pliers. I think my pliers still not in there. Let's see, you can kind of find my pliers in a second. I was just using it, right? How does the plier just? That's with me. I, I just disappear things or they run away from me. Even though they can't have really roll away feet, they still manage to run away from me. Alright. So let me go and find those ah, Let me go and find those pliers again. Uh, count my screws. Yeah. So it should be one more. Somewhere. Two, four, six, seven. There we go. Come on. I didn't have it earlier today. I guess maybe not. I thought I oh yeah, I had to have it because remember I pulled the springs from it. Got the springs, but our pliers just did we set it somewhere here? Because it's black. I don't think I put it in my pocket. This is all that's in my chair. I might have took it over there. Bring the showcase. But I need the pliers to be able to cut that tie strap and move forward here. Oh, that's just my luck. 
Alright. Maybe I did put it out here or something. Guess we'll eventually find it. Put that one back, guys, back. Now we know it's reverse thread. Oh, come on, wire, where are you? Don't you just, don't you just love that? Like maybe I pull this over and I might cover my plier. That's probably the only thing I think I did different. There it goes, look at that. Good detective work, right? All right, so let's go and get this guy here. Cut, situate it. I don't know, maybe we should go a little bit further to the round area. Uh, it's already too late, now I got him where I think I got him. So let me just go ahead and give this a good yank. Again, this shouldn't take more than a minute, really. I'm just taking my time doing a good job as much as I can. All right. You know, the small ones are the best. If you ever get like, um, I do scooter parts, right? So you get like uh, fuel lines and a lot of people think, well, you get a bigger one, it'd be stronger, right? You can grip it and much more. But actually what it is is the smaller ones because the little, I call this a tie strap. It's really a zip tie. It zips in the little, you know the little thing that interlocks it and actually squeezes a little bit more better the small one so if you ever need to secure a fuel line and everything if it doesn't work keeps leaking and you try using those metal clamps and everything just use these little small tie strap you can see some of my previous video of fixing scooters uh these things are the best at holding the fuel lines to the carburetor for the um the the well th those are back in the days right uh i think everything now is going to be electronics or electric Ugh. But, you know, I still like it. You know, I got to admit, though, I didn't get a Tesla for environmental reasons. I just got it for the fuel and the tech. Uh, a lot of people get it for the tech. They just love the high-tech stuff. Okay, so this here adhesive is almost, well, it's actually still pretty sticky, so I'll honor it. I'll keep it. Anyway, let's go and bring this guy's back here. And that was it. That was the only part for it was to actually secure the, the safety latch line in case your trunk ever malfunctions. And it doesn't get enough power or whatever. Well, I'm not sure about power, but for any reason, it just locks up on you. You can pop this open again, click on the right of the number one clockwise here, and then push on the number seven angle. These are angle description. There's no number one label. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and put this guy back. I think if we put him back, we can probably get an idea where he should be sitting with. Okay. And now this one here, hopefully it's not gonna short anything. I don't think it would. This one here, just in case, you know what I mean? This guy right here might touch this guy and maybe create some weird short, but he's still there. These cables are connected together all the way down to the path anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just tuck it in nicely. All right, there we go. I wanna put my fingerprints too much here. Looks like it's gonna take off some of the adhesive. And now we can angle this in a way where it's natural for it. There's no, there's no flex stress point. I don't think I'll be opening this often. So there you go. Notice there I'm going from the back of it. Trying to give it a good press. Then I'm going to go and put it back in. Ugh. While I'm doing this, I might as well clean the edges a little bit. Also give a good confirmation press of my PPF that's just been installed. You don't want it to lift. And they have a 10-year warranty anyway, by the time. Look at that. It still doesn't stick. And I think because of the surface, it's uh, hot. Um, I could try to put a little bit of alcohol, but I have to let it dry a little bit. Let's do that. Clean up a little bit. Alcohol. Uh, normally, if it's a cool surface, it's not going to stick that well. But once it gets heated up, the adhesive should react. That's probably the first time I ever see it come off that easily. Well, that's worse and worse. You can always reapply new... Uh, 3M tape. I just don't want to do it over and do it overboard. So it might just need a little cleaning on my end here. So that's all I'll do. Get a little bit. Just give it a circular motion. Clean this area just in case there is anything that's causing it to. Let it air out for a little bit. Then we're going to put this one back in and pop it in. We should be, I always like to say golden. There we go. Just want to angle it right away.